Oops. Oops. Hello, my truth seekers. I hope you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. I know I started the stream late. I just wanted to give people time to show up for the stream because we have a lot to cover and I don't want anyone to miss it at all. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone is fine. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. Again, hello my truth seekers. Welcome to the Keisha's Gossips and Truths. And welcome to my new viewers. Welcome to Keisha's Gossip and Truths. Yes, welcome to my live show. I hope you all subscribed. I hope you subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get notifications for when I do upload new videos for when... Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Yes, please, please hit that bell and make sure you click the right option so you can get a notification when I do post more videos. You might want to go back and check it a few times because I've been hearing people saying they're not getting a notification. So you might want to check it a couple times because if you don't know, there is some shady crap going on with my page. So you probably want to get notifications. Yes, I have these many subscribers, but some had came back to me a year later thinking I have literally dropped off the face of this earth. I stopped posting because they stopped getting notifications. So make sure you're checking your notifications and your settings to make sure they're upright and make sure they're working properly. Okay? Love you too, Winnie. Thanks for who all are here. The few that are here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the hue. I was trying to work on a hue on my video, but whatever. I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to have to look slightly orange and red. That's the hue of the video. Unfortunately, I'm thinking about changing the light. I'm going to start doing my live shows during the day. That way the sunlight, you know, can be beaming through behind me instead of, you know, so dim. And then I have to change the lighting and making sure I'm not looking orange, which is what I look right now. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying. In this video, I will be talking about how... They, I'm, I'll be talking about R. Kelly and the injustice and the bias and double standard and deep racism the media and justice system has been treating R. Kelly and a lot of black men in his status. We will be talking about that. Now, please notate that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. With that said, here is your trigger warning. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Fantastic. Now we got that out of the way. This is a trigger warning. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. As most of you should know, I've done many, many videos about R. Kelly. I've been following his life and story for a long time. I agreed with him. I took up for him. I tried to make sense of his actions. I mean, talking about a fan. I'm a true fan. Or maybe just being an empath or and a victim of sexual abuse as a child. I see his hurt and past the demon that feeds him. Not to mention... He's also very talented, as we know. So very talented. So, so talented. I can't even say that enough. Wow. I mean, you know they're trying to kill him. And this will be pretty much another legend gone. But before I dig deep into that, let us talk about these recent allegations, as I did in my last live feed, that they completely demonetized. Well, they demonetized. I'm not getting money paid for it. 
like with anything about R. Kelly, at least not I'm not anyway. Anyways, but before I dig deep into that, let us talk about these recent allegations. And be- before we go into that, we do need to go deep. We need to go deep into the lies of the women who accused him of vicious, very vicious, vicious things. I'm going to use some older videos that I have posted that YouTube had flagged and it was unlisted. And it's been kind of in my memory bank for a while. I was going to upload a Patreon. I uploaded within the next 24, 48 hours. I didn't even know I had all this information about R. Kelly until I started researching for this video. And I was like, goodness, I have a lot of videos and a lot of testimonies and stuff about this man. I'm going to post them all. And about Ali- Aaliyah too. I didn't know I had that much video footage and research, so I'll be posting that on my Patreon within the next 24, 48 hours, okay? So be looking forward to that. But like I said, we're going to be looking at some of my older videos. These are all of my videos that I made that used to be on the Truth Show, but they all got flagged. And, you know, which means YouTube saw them as, you know, harmful and vicious and not good enough for their platform. So I wasn't getting paid for it, so... I had to take them down anyway, and some of them, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into all that, but you already know my story anyway. So, in this clip, we're going to um, be looking at Jocelyn. You guys remember Jocelyn, right? She was pretty much one of the first young ladies who were targeted by her parents and targeted for having some kind of alleged affair with uh, R. Kelly, and she was all over the media. I did collect several footages of Jocelyn um, explaining her story and all the rumors that came along with it. I'm going to play that for you right now. Not all of it because I don't want to be on this live feed forever, but I'm going to play some of those clips for you, okay? I hope you guys got your wine, popcorn, whatever snacks that you guys love because it's a lot. Seriously, I'm going deep. Oh, and this video would only be up for 24 hours and then it will be on my Patreon because I know YouTube's going to flag it and I'm not getting paid for it. So this is the VIP special. So you guys, I hope you're listening and I hope you're a Patreon member because it will be coming down this time tomorrow, if not by the end of the night, just to let you guys know. It will not be up loaded and stayed uploaded on my page on Keisha's Gossip and Truth because YouTube don't allow anything about R. Kelly in the minority sense if i'm agreeing with the majority they'll leave it up there but i'm kind of on the fence i'm more of a fair ground kind of woman and they don't like that on their platform okay so just fyi this is only going to be up here for a limited amount of time okay so here is the one of the videos Now, it seems that R. Kelly is once again being accused of having an affair with a young girl. Even though the two women in the past, hence the latest Aaliyah and the unknown girl in the porno video that looked doctored, by the way. And I talk about this in the video, and I will leave the link below so you can see that. However, the young lady that came out to these alleged allegations are saying that she is not being held against her will and that she hasn't spoke to her parents in months, long before the whole R. Kelly situation. Take a look at this. And I just mainly want to say that I am in a happy place with my life and I'm not being brainwashed or anything like that. You know, it just came to a point where it definitely has gotten out of hand. So, you know, I just want everybody to know my parents and and everybody in the world that I am totally fine. I'm happy where I'm at and everything is okay with me. <laughs> so you you are not being held against your will or doing anything that you do not want to do? Oh, no, no not at all. I've never been feeling hostage or anything like that in nature. Never. So why is it now that your family's coming forward and saying this and they've asked for a welfare check and everything like that? Why, why do you think now? Um... I, I personally, I don't really know what's going on with that, so I, I wouldn't want to answer that at this moment. The last time I spoke to my parents may have been about a good on and off for about a good six, five months. I haven't really spoken to them because of everything they've been causing problems in my life about saying I've been hostage and being held against my will and stuff like that. Because it has, to, I'm very heartbroken of what's going on with this situation because it's, it's getting to a point where it's getting too much out of hand. You know, me having to deal with this. And me being 22, it's just, you know, it's just not right. So I haven't spoken to them 
mainly in about five to six months, really, okay. on and off. Okay. I mean, they'll, you know, text me from time to time, but I haven't really wanted to speak to them because of what they're doing. Are you currently in Georgia, or where are you? I actually, I'm not, no, I'm not. I wouldn't want to speak on that. Okay. Are you with other roommates? Are you free to go from where you are? No, but I want to speak on that as well. But however, right, well, all of this is being started by the girl's parents anyway. Who is to believe <clears throat> to having tried to hit her up for some money, but she refused and won't talk to them. Do note, there is no proof of any of these allegations or that these women is being held against their free will. But there is proof that they came after him. The media, especially TMZ, is using R. Kelly past allegations to make this story plausible. They're doing the same thing with Bill Cosby and any black legend. Now, do I doubt that he's having orgies and many women laying up with him? Hell no, I think he does. But it's at their own will. I'm sure they will with the pressure of media mm -hmm, and money offers, claims, that they will probably try again to if the price is right. Now, R. Kelly once again is being crucified by the media. And yet again, because of his weakness, which is women and money, will he ever learn? I probably not. Because I believe they are about to blame him and permanently label black men as perverts. I believe they're in a process. Oops, sorry. And me being 22. Plausible. I'm sure. Will he ever learn? I probably not. Sorry because I believe they are about to blame him and permanently label black men as perverts. I believe they're in the process of defacing the vision of black entertainers permanently. I mean, they're really writing this story. They're going full force to get our Kelly to commit suicide. They're driving this man to suicide. Or make it look like it. Especially when it's rumored that he was finally going to do a collab with Tamar. And rumor is he was going to finally do a collab with Beyonce. But that could have just been a rumor. Because you know Jay-Z. You got some serious security issues. Moving on. This is really, really sad. Because fans are starting to boycott his music now. I mean. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Oh, I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. But however, all of this is being started by the girl's parents anyway. Who's to believe <clears throat> to have been trying to hit her up for some money, but she refused and won't talk to them. So this video is not about to be what you think it is. Uh, I'm about to do something uh, unorthodox to the ma masses. And I said I was going to start having these videos called Y'all about to be mad at me, but I don't care. Because nobody's really thinking about the real street facts about what's going on with this young lady. This girl's family is not square. They're hood. That young lady was brought up to be hood and think in a hood mentality. And I'm going to prove my points because I came across... Um, a video where the Savage family was supposedly doing an intervention on uh, Joycelyn trying to I guess pull her away from R. Kelly's sex cult supposedly but what was going on was the father was secretly taping her or taping the intervention and they didn't know that now let me mention this before I uh, played a little clip so you got I'm not gonna play the whole thing but I want to play significant parts of it don't forget that her little sister was there also well is a part of this circuits also she just made a video that was I guess bashing R. Kelly where she's rapping in the video come on guys come on this is the come up <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we all may have heard about the latest news with R. Kelly and his girlfriends. Before I get into deep with that, keep in mind that these young ladies were all on R. Kelly's side when he wasn't in jail. Now that he's in jail and the money is running low and his lawyer has practically abandoned him aside from comments here and there, they have to come up with creative ways to get money now that the lease at the Trump Tower expires soon. Now, getting to the news, it has been reported that the person who is behind the patron account allegedly is R. Kelly's former girlfriend Jocelyn Savage who may have to show her face now because the platform they're using to make money wants hard proof or will have to return all the money that has been donated. However, there's been a lot of doubt that Jocelyn Savage may be the uh, patron account holder that calls out R. Kelly accusing him of physical abuse and forced abortions. Of course, TMZ tried to get verification proof from patron the company hosting the account and they told them that they tried you know since Monday to verify the account we're told 
the owner of the account will have a couple of days to provide proof of the government issued form of identification to satisfy patrons proving that they're the real Jocelyn Savage. Or they'll be shut down. Oh yes. Because the account has made a significant amount of money, more than 1,800 users have paid the membership fee, which ranges from $3 to $25. So if the patron turns out to be a fake, she will have to return all of that money. Oh yes. Because the allegations of her saying that she was pregnant by R. Kelly and she's had to get an abortion and was forced to get the surgery done at the house, which, oh, I'm not done yet, because another post detailed an instance where Jocelyn allegedly called R. Kelly babe instead of daddy or master and claims Kelly choked her out for not addressing him properly. Meanwhile, R. Kelly's attorney, Steve Greenberg, said that he thinks it's Jocelyn who's behind the account and stated that it's unfortunate Jocelyn now seeks to make money by exploiting her long-time loving relationship with Robert. Now remember, these are the same actions of all of the rest of his accusers, ranging from siblings, ex-wife, ex-girlfriends, close friends, booty calls, select friends, crew members, etc. After the money was gone, they all turned their backs out on him and saw other ways to exploit him for money, which is what R. Kelly said in the first place. After many alleged attempts, and not to mention the pressure from the media to verify this patron account holder, it has officially been shut down. But that still does not prove of whether or not it was or wasn't Jocelyn Savage. Yep, yep, yep. We're back. <laughs> okay. As you pretty much saw in those videos, there was always some propaganda or some agenda with these young ladies. At the end of the day, it was pretty much about money. They wanted money. They knew exactly what they were doing. It was nothing forced. The parents were in on it. Everyone is in on it. And it gets deeper and darker than that, believe it or not. You're going to find that out a little later, okay? As we know, yeah, R. Kelly is very talented. He's a very talented, very talented man. And where there is talent, lies women, especially if you're a man, trouble in many lawsuits. You can ask any rich person. Many lawsuits from people trying to freaking get paid. That's pretty much the moral of a lot of stuff. At the end of the day, many people are trying to get paid. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said... It has been leaked. It has been leaked that the, you know, the Leah, Leah and R. Kelly story, the Leah and R. Kelly story. Yeah, the Leah and R. Kelly being married and things of that nature. This is just what I'm hearing through the grapevine is real hidden. Was nothing but a PR scandal. Yes, you heard it correctly. It was nothing but a PR scandal, which means it was not a true story. They did not get married. They may have had sex, even that's not really proven, but it was nothing but a PR scandal to get more publicity for Aaliyah and to also separate their union. It was just some kind of PR stunt. That's what it was, some kind of PR stunt. If you look online at the marriage certificates, they're in different formalities. There's not one valid marriage certificate. They're all made differently from different, some of them are from different states. You know, the names is messed up, so falsified. Look at this. I mean, you don't know which one is real anymore. You notice Aaliyah never talked about it. You just heard rumors from people who allegedly was around at the time and people whom he fired later on saying, oh, they were together. I'm not saying they weren't together. I don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. I mean, I think about it. I made plenty of videos about Aaliyah and R. Kelly and things of that nature. We don't know if they were really together or they got married. I don't know because there's really no valid proof. All these marriage certificates can be falsified. There's like 80 freaking gazillion falsified freaking things up there. Hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, so we don't know what's real and what's not real, okay? I mean, you guys remember the whole PR scandal with um, Jay-Z and Rihanna? Remember it was a rumor that Jay-Z allegedly slept with Rihanna? And he came out and it, the PR guy came out and said it was just a PR stunt to bring more publicity to Rihanna. And guess what? It freaking worked. It freaking worked. Which kind of explains why Beyonce was always around um, Rihanna and they were always, always hanging together. There was really no beef between those two. I always thought because she forgave her. But now it makes sense that it was all fake in the first place. They never really slept together. It was just a PR stunt. 
That's why Jay-Z never spoke about it. I mean, everything just makes sense once you start getting to the root cause of everything. This is all alleged. I'm just telling you what I've heard. I'm not making up stories. This is literally what I heard. Yes, going back, if you just came, Aaliyah and R. Kelly, that was a PR stunt. They, they did not get married. I don't know if they had sex. I don't know. But it was a PR stunt scandal. And people whom we fired decided to make money from it because that's what people do when they need to make money. They... They literally make money on your expense. They've been doing it in Hollywood forever. Hell, you got to be in Hollywood. They do that in real life. Anyway, moving right along here. Um, yeah, anyway. So, just like the two young ladies that were staying with R. Kelly. You remember those two, two young, young ladies? You heard from one of them. You heard from her. They were staying with R. Kelly when the lease, because they had a lease at the Trump Tower, you know, his uh, condos and things of that nature in New York, I believe. Yeah, they had a lease, and the lease was paid up until December. This was the middle of the year. The lawyer said, well, the lease is paid up until blah, 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 blah. So they're fine. And this is during the whole scandal when they um put R. Kelly, they locked him up and everything. I think he was outside walking a dog or whatever, and they just locked him up. And the girls was frantic. They tried to see him. They wouldn't even let him see him. They won't let him get visitors or anything of that nature. So they was going on social media, whatever, saying, no, we're not being held at our will. Because they were standing in the big high rise in one of the Trump Tower apartments or condos or whatever. And the lease was paid up. And as soon as that lease expired, as soon as that lease expired and they were pretty much homeless, they started talking. They started talking. Yeah, but I'm going to put a pin on that for a second. Let's start with R. Kelly's ex-wife. You know who she is, right? This is R. Kelly's ex-wife who lied to the media saying that R. Kelly couldn't read. When there's many videos of R. Kelly reading and writing and more, how do you think he was able to write songs for his artists? Minding them? Sign language? <laughs> yes, he knows how to freaking read. He knows how to read. He knows how to write. I don't even know why she said that. She lied. She just took rumors from back when he was a kid. And he said he couldn't read or write because he didn't have a lot of school privilege. Those are stories he just vulnerably told the public and they just kind of ran with that shit and lawyers use it as a ploy to win cases i would if i was a lawyer but r kelly do know how to read and write he's he's not an idiot okay he wrote hundreds of songs for artists how did he write the songs for the artists if he don't know how to read they would have said something by now so she lied about that and um yeah so we can pretty much clearly say that these media propaganda so to speak that they have pretty much did the same thing to Bill Cosby and you remember Martin Luther King Jr. the rumor about him cheating and they had the video recordings and things of that nature but they really didn't release the video recordings of him cheating but we heard it all through the media from the Hoover guy but yet nothing happened to him when he supposed he allegedly had these alleged orgies no one even doubted that he didn't have orgies. I was among the many people who actually believed that Martin Luther King Jr. was having sex parties. Reason being, I'm not saying he didn't, because the people he surrounded himself with made that story pretty plausible. I mean, he surrounded himself with the orgy king, um, Aretha Franklin's father, Cleveland. I forgot his first name. I think that's his first name, actually. Cleveland, who was known. He was a pastor. This is Aretha Franklin, the late Aretha Franklin who was known to be an origin king. And many artists had confessed to him being an origin king, but no one really said anything about Martin Luther King Jr. participating in these orgies. But I assumed it was real because he hung around the orgies king and because it was in a paper. But if we think about it, how far will the right supremacists and the racism and the justice system that are against the majority of African Americans, how far would they go to, ca to seriously castrate and destroy a black man's legacy? How far would they really go? Would they make up stories in the paper of fake orgies? Would they plan assassinations? Would they plan suicides? <laughs> I mean, we got to think like them sometimes to realize how far they would go to do this. And once I thought that, I started questioning everything I heard about everyone. All of us heard about the rumors, but, but no one ever heard it. Heard it. We don't even know if it's true or not. It's so easier to doctor stuff. I can doctor voice recordings of people. Are you kidding me? But that's not the point. What are you guys talking about in the comment section? 
I know, fast little girls. I know, they were young and hot. I was 14 to 15 years old, and I had a crush on R. Kelly. And I didn't have a lot of um, parental guidance. I probably would have been one of them chicks, too. Not, I'm not going to even lie about that. I mean, my mother was too busy doing her thing, and I really didn't have a father in my life. So I probably would have been one of them girls as well, unfortunately. Aaliyah, however, had her, remember her, her brother, and her mom hung with her a lot. So, I don't know. The story's sketchy. I'm starting to question everything about that whole Lee and R. Kelly story. Christina Street, Beyonce is not happy either. They just don't love each other's business. Can we stay on the point here, people? Let's, let's talk about the subject here. I don't want you, no one narrating a whole different story in the comment section. But you're all right about that, Christina. You can't believe what you see on social media. You're absolutely right. Okay, now get back to the story. Now, here is a clip here. This is a clip of, of R. Kelly's ex-wife doing her thing. And you guys are about to see from her mouth, from her voice, of the trueness of her shadiness. She went from praising R. Kelly when those spousal checks was coming, those child support checks was coming. She's like, oh, yeah, that's my other baby daddy. Oh, yeah. I mean, she was seriously flooding him. As soon as those checks stopped coming, she started doing what Jocelyn and them started doing. She started running her mouth and making them cockamamie stories to get paid. Lifetime and news media and news uh, broadcast TV stations and etc. They pay them to come on their show to say these things about these people. Just listen to this. I recorded this a long time ago. You'll find this. Actually, you won't find this on Keisha's Gossip because they flagged it. But take a look at it here. While watching this, I felt like I was watching a bunch of series. I felt like I was watching a bunch of bitter women who banded together to make a man that they cared about who used them pay for everything. But on the other side, I felt their pain. They were manipulated and taken advantage of, yes. But the way it was displayed was somewhat skeptical because it's this clip. Come through, come through, come through, Facebook. Lie. It's all good, Christina. <laughs> yes, that is my baby daddy in the background. What y'all about? Mm. Turn right to I to Oh, I'm sorry. Did you guys catch that? Let me go back. Check that. Uh, yes, that is my baby daddy playing in the background. What y'all about? Mm. Turn right to I 285 South. Questions you have passed my test. Happy people! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it. Yes, them who people? Happy people! Come on, baby daddy. Other baby daddy. that it's the simple fact that yes she's still using his name and she loves the attention I mean that's obvious oh and word on the street he was still paying her child support and not to mention spousal support until his money you know took a dive and that had to decrease but before I go deeper take a look at this this is the alleged victim check it out She loved the attention. We have to pick that up. So yes, Andrea isn't this nice and easygoing and hurt person. I mean, she's still carrying his last name. I mean, I can't say that again. Taking his money, showing up half naked. And this didn't start after our killer. She was doing that crap before. And how and why she was able to marry him with 
no repercussions. Black Child wanted to vigilant him, make him look bad as possible, especially after the BBC documentary that aired last year. They were like already having daggers out already when that aired. It was going in for the kill after that aired. You know what I mean? Oh, and Sparkle, who blamed herself for introducing her cousin to R. Kelly, who still worked for R. Kelly. Well, it was told that she was sleeping with him as well. And back then, she was so in tune with her career. And she knew R. Kelly was the man to put her on the map, you know. So she did whatever it took, like many young girls and of age girls and men have done and did back then. Okay, so let's point that out. Because word on the street was that she didn't care too much about her cousin. This is Sparkle. Yeah. And, well, she didn't show it anyway until that tape got leaked. And then she showed remorse and so on for the sake of her reputation and, of course, guilt. So the question is, why now? Why all of a sudden these women are trying to ruin a very talented man's career? Well, if you all remember the very publicized news conference last year with the girl Jocelyn, who claims that she was being forced and held hostage by R. Kelly. And then she got caught lying and being forced by her parents to use R. Kelly for money and popularity. So, yes, they, there was lying and manipulation on both ends. And it still continues. Now, this story shall continue. But it seems that, yes, R. Kelly is wrong for messing around with these young girls and so many. I mean, I'm not trying to... Um, make him seem like a saint. Yeah, he was wrong for messing around with underage girls, but he didn't force any of these girls to do any of these things. They did it willingly, and that's it. They could have left at any time. There was no gun held to their heads. I didn't hear any of them saying that he made me do it. He, whatever. I mean, they add embellishment with it, with the beating and stuff, but there's no proof or court records or any police records saying that he did any of these things. I don't know if they singled the cops or whatever, but there's no witnesses saying that he did any of these things. Yes, witnesses did say that he did mess around with under, underage girls, but there was no force to get any of these girls to do any of these things. But I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm not saying that he's right. They're both wrong at some point. They had some part in this as well. And um, in terms of him having to reap the repercussions, I don't see any charges being filed. I mean, these underage girls was willingly, they willingly had sex with him and they mentioned on live television that they were willingly um, doing this to him. Yes, they were manipulated, but you can be manipulated at any age. There's women who's older, way older than these young girls were at that time who were manipulated, still being manipulated right to this day. Not saying it's right, but that's a fact. And if you really want to get into um, details about older men messing with younger women, they have been doing that for years, but it seems to be a double standard when it comes to black slash colored men doing it versus white men doing it. And I'm not going to go into a slideshow of that. Um, I'll put the link below of the channel who did do a slideshow and went in depth with this. I'll put her um, link below so you can watch that. And I will be going to that later. But anyway... With that being said, I want you guys to uh, take a look at this, and then I'll go on from there. This week, R. Kelly granted an exclusive interview to BET to discuss life after his trial. Here to help clarify his statements is his attorney, Paul F. Tompkins, Celebrity Defender. It's good to see everyone here. Stretch, Helen. R. Kelly began the interview by discussing certain allegations by some of his employees. They've said that they're concerned that you like underage girls. Do not listen to the people that was fired. <laughs> you know, don't even listen to the people that was hired. Next, Mr. Kelly was questioned about similar allegations from his very own brother, Gary. But your brother, Gary, mm -hmm. was not fired. He's still your brother. I mean, he was fired. It, uh, but he's still your brother. Doesn't so matter. So, I mean, he can't lie. He's still my brother, but if he was still my brother, why did he get fired? Why did he get fired? I can't get it. Then, Mr. No, Kelly was asked about how the trial affected his music career. I said, no matter what, I'm not going to allow this to make me run under a rock and not do my job. You know, no different than a fireman, you know. You know, you got to run into a fire, no matter how big the blade is. 
Finally, Mr. Kelly was asked the question everyone has been waiting for. Do you like teenage girls? When you say teenage, how are we talking? Girls who are teenagers. So yes, judging from the video, I don't even know if R. Kelly knew that it was right or wrong to have sexual intercourse with these girls. I think he thought at a certain age they knew right from wrong. And you do know right from wrong at a certain age, but legally, in terms of uh, the law, you have to be 18. But I think a lot of girls know right from wrong. They knew he was too old. They knew they were young. And I said it's okay, so please don't put that in um, my mouth. I'm not saying it all. I'm not saying that it was okay because it's wrong. <laughs> they both knew better. Okay, I'll just point that out. They both knew better. While watching this, I anyway, moving right along here. Okay, <laughs> as you can see, let me just leave that right there. As you can see, there have been some inconsistencies. Let's be realistic here. And lies, but that doesn't discount what he's done. But let's get deeper, deeper into our Kelly's past. Once we do that, then we can get a clear picture of why he acts and makes the decisions that he does. Because he seemed he seemed to have had a, a sex addiction, pretty much. And um, being as famous as he is, he probably had girls of all ages throwing themselves at him. You know, like all uh, artists and anyone in Hollywood or whoever. Anyway. But if you guys didn't know, R. Kelly was, we need to take into consideration that when it came to the conclusion that R. Kelly may have been introduced to sex manipulation at a very young age. And that rendered him incapacitated, therefore he associates pleasure, he associates pleasure and anger with release with sex. Let me say that again. Okay, as you can see here, Kelly was sexually molested as a teenager, you know, and, you know, he was also when he was seven years old up into his teenage years, I believe that's what it was. The hairline kind of kind of got it um, backwards there, but it was he was seven all up into his teenage years. He was, you know, molested and raped and things of that nature. So he was yes, he was introduced to sex manipulation at a very young age. That rendered him incapacitated. Therefore, he associated he associates pleasure and anger release with sex. So that's why he used sex for that. That he never really got counseling for, and those desires pretty much, and those demons got fed. I mean, they got fed. I mean, then the money just enabled people around him, and that continued to feed his addiction and desires that became enhanced to the point where it consumes him. Hence, his songs. But as you heard in many of his songs, R. Kelly admitted to battling with these demons and his faith. He was always going back and forth. Sex addiction, God, Jesus, drunk, putting a gun to my head. You know, he was always vocalizing and singing about his battles with his faith and also his demons. He never got counseling for that. He never learned how to shut that off using sex as a way to release or to... I don't even know. I mean, there's different various reasons why men use sex for uh, different various reasons. Some use it for pleasure. Some use it to sh show their love. And some use it for sick, crazy-ass reasons. But we're not getting into that right now. The point is, he was a victim of molestation at a very young age. And he never got counseling for it. And that pretty much enhanced his desire and obsession with sex. Let's put it out there. Okay. Even now, with all his former girlfriends, bitter girlfriends, associates, employees, family, they are trying to get paid on his expense. Our killer, may, he may not be the brightest person in the world, so they're taking advantage of this. He's not on social media reading about every news thing and things of that nature, you know. He's not that kind of guy. He just let it roll off. You know, a lot of celebrities don't be on social media like that because, Why? But, so, they're definitely trying to get paid on his expense. Nothing new. Any, any artist can tell you that. And he's still, but even though all of this is happening, he's still keeping his faith and not committing suicide as of yet. Anyway, I hope not. I pray not. But you guys, have you guys understand, if R. Kelly dies, what will happen to R&B? And good, soulful, timeless music. I mean, most of them died or they were killed off. 
Do you see what they're doing? R&B probably would end if, <laughs> with R. Kelly. I mean, let's be realistic here. What? We got Tank, Tyrese, and the new generation people are clueless. No offense, they clueless. Just saying. I'm talking about the male R&B singers, not the females. They're clueless. I mean, R&B, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not even going with John Legend. I don't even know what fence he's straddling right now. John Legend is, he on a whole different lane by himself. But if we think about it, R&B, good, soulful, message-giving R&B, more than likely, and could end with R. Kelly. Hold up. Why did I mention John Legend? Wasn't John Legend in this video? You don't think John Legend is trying to jump on this whole, you know, you know, train of uh, pretty much catastrophic and castrating R. Kelly's career train because he wanted to be the next king of R&B. You don't think that's why he jumped on this video of the whole Butcher series. Now that I think about it, he may, it may be an agenda why he's doing that. <sighs> People are so shady. But anyway, getting back to this video. I don't got time for John Legend right now. But anyway, you all know... You all know what I mean, right? I mean, we do have Tank. We do have Tyrese. But they're not R. Kelly. R. Kelly brought good, soulful music, message-giving music, videos, and movie formats. The man was amazing. He could sit on the stage, on a chair, and sing his ass off and tell an entirely different story without all that background. He's like an Adele, kind of. But Adele's like him, but you get what I'm saying. He was able to do that with his music, tell stories. His music is iconic. Despite of, you know, his personal life and the females and things of that nature. What would happen if something happened to him? What the heck would happen to R&B? Good R&B. Well, we got to listen to John Legend now? I mean, no, I'm not listening to him like that. Okay, what are you guys saying here? Oof. Oof. See what you guys are saying in the comment section. I haven't been looking over there in a while. I know, I know, Jack Mack. I mean, he would never top R. Kelly, but I'm starting to question his agenda on why he jumped on that whole Butcher series uh, thing. Now now that I think about it, I think he's trying to get rid of his competition. You know what I mean? I never stopped to think of that. Wow, people are just so shady. <clears throat> really, I mean, very, very shady. I just realized that. Oh, my gosh. But <laughs> let's get back to the point. As, and, you know, now that we're talking about the Butcher series, we're talking about the Butcher series now. The, you know, the hypocrisy and the hypocritical with that whole Lifetime Butcher series. I mean, let's be realistic here. There are plenty of men in Hollywood who have carelessly showcased their underage partners and nothing happened to them. Where is their damn Butcher series? I swear, it's like they have a list of iconic black men they want to destroy. I mean, just take a look at this. You know what really pisses me off is the way the media is slowly destroying all of our African-American musicians and singers, one by one. But completely ignoring the fact that Celine Dion was having an affair with a man in his late 30s and early 40s when she was only about 15 or 16 years old. Or the fact that 27-year-old Sonny Bono had an affair with Cher when she was only 16 years old. Or Jerry Seinfeld, who had an affair with his current wife, Jessica, when she was only 17 years old. Or Justin Gaston, when she was only 15 years old. Oh, I'm going on about this, but I think you all get the fucking picture. It seems other races can do this, but they overexploit any African-American man who does this. But hey, it is what it is. Let's move on. Thank you, Chase. <laughs> Now, they're saying that R. Kelly is involved in a sex ring and or cult. Now, I talked about this ring several times in my Illuminati videos. We'll leave the link to those below as well. The sex ring and or cult has been going on for a while. You see, they lure young girls and boys by charm, promise of security, and sometimes fame. It's kind of like, like men who believe in Israelites way of thinking. You see, the Israelites are a group of black men that are to believe to be the original Hebrews, but publicly never admitted to this. But study and history does show that the original Hebrews and Jews were in fact black. However, some of them believe to take on many wives and their girlfriends and make them very submissive and sex-like. 
the ritual, yes, the ritual, and way of living has been practiced for centuries now, believe it or not. It's even in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament who had concubines such as Hagar in Genesis 16 and 1, who did not have the same status as a wife. I think we must acknowledge that God did not forbid the Old Testament saints to have more than one wife. Indeed, the law even has instructions for the man with more than one wife. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until the late 20th century when the black community started practicing this belief. It started off with no more than 25,000 to about 40,000 members. It has since grown to about 200,000. It's been told that R. Kelly may be practicing this. But here's the problem. In order for him to be a part of the Israelites, there are rules to be followed, like the hair. They're not allowed to shave their hair and they have to dress a certain way and etc, etc, etc. To learn more, read um, Deuteronomy 28 or Revelation chapter 1 verses 12 through 17. He's more of a comparison to Hugh Hefner and Charlie Sheen. There we go. And guess what? There is more. There is more. It didn't stop with those particular individuals. You may, some, some of you may remember this. Some of you may not. It's maybe before your time. Or you just don't read about past legends or anything of that nature. You're modern. Which is okay. It is definitely okay. Anyway. Okay, so. Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, he was a rock and roll pioneer. You see, Jerry Lee Lewis divorced his second, yes, second wife. Wasn't even finalized yet when he got hitched again to his 13-year-old third cousin. Yeah, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Her name was Myra Gale Brown, who reportedly still believe in Santa Claus when they wed in 19-freaking-57. And all they, all, the only thing that happened to him, literally, it was, it was a scandal, and that was pretty much the end of it. That was it. There's more. Mm -hmm. Wilmer Vadarama, his name is Vadarama, yeah. When it comes to dating teenage girls, Wilmer deserves a spot in the freaking Hall of Fame right next to freaking Elvis Presley. And I'm not even understating it. Matter of fact, yeah, I am understating it. Yeah. Seriously, he needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, the man is fine and things of that nature. But let me just continue with this uh, story. The former, that 70s show star, was 30 when he started dating 17-year-old Demi Lovato. This is Demi Lovato. Mm -hmm. That lasted for six freaking years. Meanwhile, Wilmer also dated Lindsay Lohan when she was 17 years old. Yes. Lindsay Lohan and her parents didn't say anything. They didn't care. I mean, she was paying the bills. <laughs> Shit. You know, hey, do what you want, Lindsay. You know, basically. And he dated Mandy Moore when she was only 16 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm not even done yet. Oh, and get this. This pedo also, also claimed on the Howard Stern show that he took Mandy Moore's virginity. Of course, you know, she denied this. But the point is, nothing happened to him. He still have a career to this day, and nothing has happened to him. He's not in jail for anything. He's doing just fine and probably continue dating underage girls for all the heck we know. I mean, he probably went to even younger. Who the heck knows? Because he don't like anyone his age. I don't know his marital status at this moment. I don't follow him like that. But I think you all get the freaking picture. Now, and I'm still not done yet. Fergie, proving that it's not just men who have inappropriately had relationships with teenagers because this singer, Fergie, was 23 years old when she dated Justin Timberlake when he was just 16 years old. And no, his parents did not say anything. They didn't care because, again, he was probably paying the bills. And then it is about money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Nicole Scherzinger and Harry Styles, that similar... To Fergie and Justin, Harry Styles casually dated Pussycat Dolls star Nicole Scherzinger. You guys remember her? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Yeah, that whole group. Yeah, yeah. anyway. When he was a member, he was still a member of One Direction, that old group. Well, it's not an old group, but it was a long time ago. The age gap certainly did turn heads. Scherzinger was in her 30s when she first crossed paths with then 16-year-old rising star Harry Styles. 
And no one said nothing. His parents didn't say anything. No one said nothing. Hope you guys are following me. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not done yet. Woody Allen. You heard about this. You're going to have to be young, old. You can definitely. I'm sure you heard about this during the whole Jeffrey Epstein um, thing. Yeah. While Woody Allen's relationship with wife. You know, with uh, and then it, what was that star Mia Farrow? Well, relationship with um Mia Farrow and her adopted daughter Sunya Previn. Yeah, so he wasn't married to um Mia Farrow. I believe they were just boyfriend and girlfriend or something like that. But it was pretty, 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 pretty scandalous. And as are the allegations of child sexual abuse lodged against him by the daughter Dylan. Yeah. In 2018, Englehart mm -hmm, revealed that she mm -hmm, had an eight-year-old affair with then 42-year-old director when she, when she was 16 years old. And people around Woody Allen say, yes, he was sexually abusing Soon Yi Preven, whatever the heck her freaking name is. Soon Yi Preven. Yes, when she was young, brainwashing and everything. They're still married right to this day. And let's not forget Woody Allen was also best friends with Jeffrey Epstein. They were friends. That is not a hidden fact. They were best friends. But nothing that's happened to Woody, Woody Allen. He is still doing his thing behind the scenes. He's still got a career. He's still showing up at gangs, I believe. He's still walking the streets. He's still freaking free. And I'm still not done yet. Doug Hutchinson, or Hutchins, who was best known for playing creepy characters in such projects as The Green Mile and TV's Lost. You see, Doug Hutchins was 51 years old when he married aspiring actress singer Courtney Stoden when she was 16 or 14, something like that, in 2011. And get this, they got a freaking reality show. Yes, they got a freak. I'll answer questions when I'm done. I kind of want to get through this. It's getting long already. I answer questions when I'm done, okay? But anyways, these two, he was 51 years old. She was young and they got a freaking reality show a reality show and nothing happened to any of them nothing now this is the young lady Chrissy Teigen had a um you know a little fight with because Chrissy Teigen called her disgusting and told her to die or something along those lines I don't know why she well this could be the reason why but why would she attack her and not him but that was kind of real she can't talk I mean, she was a minor, allegedly messing around with old people or, you know, whatever. The point is, this is the young lady that Chrissy Teague was having a battle with that pretty much got all over the media. I did a video about it and she had to, well, I'm not going to make this about Chrissy Teague or John Legend. That'd be another video. Move right along here. Anyway, and then Steven Tyler, you guys remember him, right? Who's Errol Smith front man and get this. When he was 24 years old, when he began dating 16-year-old Julie Holcomb, Wrigley enough, Tyler convinced, pay attention, Holcombs, this is Holcomb, Holcomb, and I'm not even mispronouncing that, mother and make, yeah, mm -hmm. he convinced her mother to make him her freaking guardian, to make him her guardian. She was only 16 years old. Well, I heard she was actually 14, but, you know, whatever. Between 14 to 60 years old. And they let him and I'm not even done yet so he became her legal guardian they were dating mm -hmm. so she was th that let me get this he only did this because they were dating and sleeping with one another when he was 24 and she was 16 or 14 something along those lines and he did that so she can travel over state lines while he was touring with the band yes he literally adopted a minor and no one said anything and he still got away with it. <laughs> it's like a, it's like seriously adopt. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not even going there anyway. And then we have the infamous Elvis Presley. He was 24 years old. 24 years freaking old. Mm-hmm. 24 years old. Elvis Presley was 24 years old when she went. What are you guys are talking about? Yes, these men are pervs. However, Kelly took it to another level. Uh, well, again, please stay on the subject. We'll get into that whole thing later. And Jay-Z can't talk either. He messed around with minors as well. He just, 
managed to get away with it, just like Sean Combs. Anyway, getting back to the point. <clears throat> yes, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was 24 years old, and he was one of the biggest stars, as we know, when he was when um, Priscilla was 14 years old. They met when she was 14 years old, and apparently they met during the time he was stationed in Germany during his military service. Her parents knew. I heard he paid them off, and they said nothing. Yes. And also, Elvis dating and sleeping with various of young underage girls was well known in Hollywood. Everyone knew he was doing this. People wrote books about it. There's pictures about it. There's videos about it. But again, he still has his little whatever uh, thing he has going on over there. What is it? Uh, that place? Um, whatever his uh, place is. Anyways, he still got that little museum. He's still making millions of dollars. He's still got a spot in Las Vegas. He, you can still get married to someone who looks like him. And again, he's well known for dating minors. He married one, got her pregnant. And a lot of other deep, dark things. And there's people who can actually give you testimonial proof that he's he done this. But his music is still playing and he's still been idolized and not a damn thing happened to him. However, but <laughs> when, look at our Kelly. <laughs> Just the difference between our Kelly and Elvis is that Elvis is white and our Kelly is black. Let's be realistic here. I mean, the hypocrisy and destruction of this man's legacy is now being destroyed. No one is saying or doing anything. They're literally, seriously, they're literally going to the extreme. YouTube threatened to take down all of his music videos, etc. Stations don't play his songs anymore. This is crazy. It's so biased as hell. Why Hollywood is so quick to castrate a black man? It's like they couldn't wait. But Elvis is still getting paid and honored, as are the rest of them that I just mentioned. Their careers are fine. But let a black man get exposed for these atrocities and sick endeavors. They're damn near hung and crucified in a media propaganda kind of way. But it's okay for whites, etc., to sleep who, with whoever, regardless of their age. Does this have something to do with slavery? I mean, do we, do the world still see blacks as slaves with no rights to break any laws despite what the laws are? And screw if any other race breaks them? Is that what black people are polled to? You know, I'm not saying what they're doing is right. And if anyone in the comment section are saying that I'm going against these victims, don't let me give you stories of what I had to endure as a child being a victim of a lot of stuff. Mine became legendary to the point it was on the news. So don't ever put me in that category of someone who's condoning this. But facts are facts and fair is fairness. And this is coming from a victim herself. There's no Stockholm Syndrome here. Move it right along here. Now, so... Does this have something to do, let me repeat myself, to do with slavery? Do they still see blacks as slaves with no rights to break any laws despite what the laws are and screw if any other race breaks them? So if these white people can break any laws for sleeping with minors, it's okay. I mean, we can, we can work with that unless it gets out of control like the Harvey Weinstein situation, the Epstein situation, but then that's all good. I mean, because, you know, you're white, you're a seniority. You, you got to like that, you know, do your thing, you know. But if you're black, oh, my gosh, no music. They're going to hang you, basically, in a media propaganda kind of way. I mean, is that what it, that's what it is? Or is it something far more deeper? I mean, what am I missing? What am I missing? Let's sign off, sign off in the comment section. What am I missing? I'm going to bring your comments over here. I'm going to take this stupid slideshow down because it's getting on my nerves. And I'm going to bring... Uh, whew, the comments. I'm going to try to leave the comments. I don't want to leave them here, but it looks like I have another choice. Okay, so sign off in the comment section. If you want to call, you can go ahead and call. I'll bring the number back up for you. Actually, the number's already up there already, so I'll need to bring it back up. The number's right there. I'm going to leave it like that because I'm just going to leave it like that. So go ahead and sound off. If you want to call, go ahead and call. If you don't want to call, that's all good. But 
I believe that there is definitely a double standard when it comes to black men being guilty and white men being, being, being guilty. Nothing happens to white men when they're messing around with minors, but black men damn near get crucified when their story is exposed. There's definitely a double standard. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Um, Chuck Berry, hold on. Let's see here. You guys, who's talking to my Jay Z in the comment section? Someone is talking about Jay Z. How would Jay Z even get in it? Oh, I'm not talking about Jay Z right now. I mean, I heard he was messing around with Aaliyah at a really young age, and I heard he uh, took uh, Foxy Brown's uh, virginity. Of course, he had denied those things, but it is what it is. I know they took it down his YouTube channel. That was wrong. That was so not right. I know, I know. I mean, if something happened with R. Kelly, what would happen to R&B? You said Chuck Berry was shitting in piano women? Where do you guys get this information from? I know, I know, I know. But R. Kelly, you know, he should have got some help. He should have stopped while he was ahead. You know, and it's really crazy that, the, you know, the uh, they haven't got this far. We are still waiting on Elvis' uh, three-part Butcher series. No one even doing anything about him. These, first of all... Again, these girls was not forced to do anything. They did it on their free will. They knew he was too old. They're not stupid. Yeah, it's definitely... But I know, it's exactly, Sunny. It's definitely still not acceptable. I'm not saying it is. But there's definitely a double standard. Absolutely. Definitely a double standard. I know Harvey Weinstein's stuff is still being played. So is Elvis. His stuff is still being played. Woody Allen on um, movies that he produced is still being played. No one has taken down any of his things as well. Sean Cohn's first baby mama, she was a minor when he started messing around with her. He's still getting praise. Biggie Smalls beat the heck and all kinds of stuff in the studio to Little Kim. And there's witnesses who are still alive to this day can pretty much testify that Biggie Smalls was a monster. You heard his songs. All they talk about is money, bees, and girls and stuff. I mean, he did things to Lil' Kim that would really make... Just check out my video. It's actually on Keisha's Gossip. Biggie Smalls, rest his soul, he was not a nice man. But his face has always been pushed to the forefront. And Tupac is being pushed to the back because he's more of a positive kind of person. And Biggie Smalls, they want Biggie Smalls to represent black rap because of what he stood for. If you guys don't get what I'm saying. Positive versus negative. You heard white people even say it. If you're willing to talk down about your people and talk all this nasty stuff and ghetto money and hookers and things of that nature, heck yeah, we'll promote you. But you can't rap about anything positive. I mean, you can't do that. You know, you can't. You can't. You can't. <clears throat> My prediction from 2020 about Jay Z and B getting trouble coming. I predicted that. Really? I may have. Whether or not nothing happened to him now, I think. I don't know. I'm following him like that. Really need to step up and help respect our race better. Oh, yeah. We definitely need to do that. Absolutely. I f <laughs> Sonny, you're crazy. <laughs> I love you, but thank you. All these are Kelly jokes. Let's talk about some of y'all uncles and daddies. Girl, don't get us into that subject. That'd be a whole nother freaking live broadcast. I don't think I have enough energy to talk about that, honey. But I know where you're going. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. He used the desperation to pray. We can't forget a lot of these girls were very poor and wanted... I know. I know. That's why I said in the videos I'm not condoning his behavior. But, you know, it is what it is. I just want the fairness to be on a more fair ground and not them to go to the extreme... Can we separate the work from that? Y'all doing it to everyone else. Why not him? Why do you got to go to extreme? They did the same thing to Bill Cosby. They want all the stations took his movies, TV shows, all of it down off the social media and platforms just because that story came out. But everyone else stuff stayed up there. That was not right. 
<clears throat> oh yeah. But okay, looks like. Oh yeah, Tupac was the bomb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nikisha, he's not the only one that should, you know, not be behind bars. A lot of them should be. Absolutely. You notice these other people who collaborated with him in the past are, you know, suspiciously quiet. I wonder why. Hmm. Hmm. You know why. You know why they're quiet. You guys know why they're quiet. Which, what did I predict though, Truth Seeker? I don't remember. Yeah, well, it don't matter anyway. Okay, well, I'm going to be out. <clears throat> I think we pretty much exhausted this whole of the tool. Thanks for who all tuned in. Love you guys. Love you guys. See you on the next live feed. I do have a video coming my, coming out with Kiki. Stay tuned. <laughs> mm -hmm, Kiki. Stay tuned. See you all later. Bye.